Nowadays, many different types of tissues and many different types of organs have been successfully transferred from one individual to a different individual, and this process is known as grafting or organ transplant. Now, many different examples of successful organ transplants exist. For example, we've been able to transplant organs such as our heart, our lungs, our liver, our kidneys, our bone marrow, the ovaries, as well as things like our blood, which we'll focus on in the next lecture, and the cornea of the eye. And actually, the cornea of the eye is a relatively successful type of grafting process because the cornea represents an immunologically privileged site. And that basically decreases the complications that are involved with grafting of the cornea. In fact, we can successfully graft, remove the cornea from a cadaver and place it onto a living individual. Now, when we transfer an organ or a tissue from one individual to a different individual, in this case, that organ or tissue is known as an allograft. But if we're removing a tissue from one individual and moving it onto a different location on that same individual, in this case, we call that organ or tissue that is being removed and transferred an autograph. So auto means we're, we're dealing with that same individual and allo means we're dealing with two different individuals. Now, as you might expect, the process of grafting and organ transplantation is actually a very, very complicated process and, that, and that's because it deals with a great amount of precision, a great amount of analyzation, and a great amount of preparation. Now, the primary reason, the primary thing that creates these complications is actually the immune system of that host individual that is accepting that graft or that organ. So let's discuss some of the major issues involved with transferring grafts as well as organs from one individual to a different individual. So let's examine graft rejection, let's discuss graft versus host disease and also infections. And then let's discuss some of the methods that medical professionals actually use to fight these different complications that arise from transplantation. So let's begin with graft rejection. And let's first recall how our immune system actually works. So recall that the entire goal of our immune system, the entire goal of white blood cells, is to be able to differentiate between our own host healthy cells and infected cells or pathogens that might make their way into our body. So our white blood cells use something called the major histocompatibility complex and self antigens to basically distinguish our host cells from infected cells or pathogens. Now, the problem with grafting or transplantation is when we actually transfer that tissue or that organ, the tissue or the organ on the other individual might have different major histocompatibility complexes and different self antigens. And if these antigens are not compatible, if there is no match, then what the white blood cells of that host immune system do is they recognize those other self antigens of the other individual as pathogenic as being foreign and they mount a defensive response they label those cells for destruction and begin destroying that allograft altogether so once again when a tissue or organ is transplanted it has a very high chance of being rejected by the host individual recall that our immune system attacks anything that it recognizes as foreign or pathogenic and if the major histocompatibility complex mhc self antigens of the transplanted tissue cells do not match or are not compatible with the host cells then the host immune system 
system will mount a defensive response and destroy that allograph. And we see that take place in the following diagram. So let's suppose this is our host cell and the host cell will contain special major histocompatibility complexes on the membrane as shown in blue. And it will take some type of protein, some type of self antigen and place it onto that complex as shown in green. And the host immune cells, for example, cytotoxic T cells, will be able to distinguish this host cell from some type of foreign pathogen as a result of these self antigens present on the MHC protein. Now, if we basically transplant a graft, a tissue or an organ that contains cells with a different MHC protein with a different major histocompatibility complex that contains an incompatible, a different self antigen, then the host immune cell will label the cell as being pathogenic, as being foreign. And what will happen is this cell will destroy that graft cell along with that entire allograft. And what this cytotoxic T cell does specifically is it binds onto this complex and it initiates the release of powerful digestive proteins and those proteins drill holes in the membrane of these graft cells and that ultimately lyses and destroys the cell. So this is the major problem that is involved with the transplantation and grafting process, the actual immune system of that host organism, host individual destroying that transplanted tissue or organ. Now, another important uh, complication is actually the opposite of this. Uh, so this is called graft versus host disease or GVHG. So let's suppose we're transplanting some type of tissue or organ from one individual to a different individual. And this particular organ contains a high concentration of T cells of white blood cells. And one example of such an organ, such a tissue is bone marrow. So let's suppose we're transform, we're transferring bone marrow from one individual to a different individual. The problem with this is the bone marrow contains a high concentration of T cells. And these T cells, when they're transferred into the host individual, the T cells contain receptors that might not recognize the self antigens and the major histocompatibility complexes found on the host cells. And what that means is when the graft cell binds onto the host cell, it will begin to release these enzymes that will destroy the host, cell, <clears throat> the host cells of that host individual. So when transplanting tissue that contains a high concentration of white blood cells, such as T cells, there is a high probability that the graft T cells will recognize the host cells of that individual as being foreign, as being pathogenic. And this will begin a defense response in which these T cells will begin attacking and destroying our host cells. And this is of particular importance when transplanting things like the bone marrow because bone marrow actually contains a very high concentration of T cells. So these are the two major problems, two major complications that accompany grafting and organ transplant. Now, another complication that is really no longer a complication because we have well, uh, ways of dealing with it, uh, with it is infections. But this was a problem when organ transplant and grafting was at its beginning. So the donated tissue or organ may contain dangerous pathogens such as HIV, hepatitis B or hepatitis C, rabies, syphilis, and many other different types of diseases and pathogens. So basically, if we're transplanting an organ that contains HIV into an individual that does not contain HIV, 
that individual will obtain that HIV and will then be HIV positive. Now, this was a problem in the beginning, but nowadays we have different types of ways of testing for these different types of viruses and pathogenic agents. And so before the donation or transplantation actually takes place, we know what types of pathogenic agents are found in that donated tissue or donated organ. Now the next question is, how exactly do we solve these different complications? What exactly do we do? Well, the best case scenario, the best way to actually ensure that the organ or tissue that is transplanted is successfully accepted by that host individual is to actually use the same tissue of that individual. Now, of course, this cannot be done always. We can, for example, easily transplant a piece of skin from one location location to a different locations in our uh, in our body but obviously we can't transplant things like the heart because we only have a single heart Another good case scenario is if we have a twin. If we actually have an identical twin, this creates very little complications because those two twins will have very similar, if not identical, MHC, major histocompatibility self-antigen complexes. And so when we transplant an organ or a tissue from one twin, from one, uh, uh, one of the twins to the different twins, this will create very very little complication and the immune system will accept that organ. Now, of course, these instances are actually very rare because not always do we have a twin and not always can we actually transplant an organ because we only have one of, the, uh, one of each organ, not including things like our lungs or our kidneys. Now, two very common methods, much more common methods than what we just discussed are tissue typing and immunosuppression. Now, tissue typing is actually a pretty complicated process, so we're not going to go into too much details, but what tissue typing basically is, it's a process of determining the type of major histocompatibility complexes and a type of self-antigens that are found within that host individual and then finding the exact match or a very similar match, a compatible match from another individual that contains very similar uh, MHC antigen complexes. So tissue typing uh, is the process that involves determining the major histocompatibility complex antigens of the host individual and finding a donor that is most compatible that contains the least mismatches. Another important type of method that is used to basically solve these complications and is probably used virtually on all cases of grafting an organ transplant is immunosuppression. Now, immunosuppression deals with using different types of chemical agents that are extracted from other organisms or synthesized in a lab. And what these chemical agents do is they essentially uh, decrease the ability of our immune immune system to actually fight off different infections including these grafts and organs that are transplanted into our body. So these chemical agents interfere with the processes of forming white blood cells. For example, they can interfere with the process of protein synthesis or DNA replication and that will greatly hinder the ability of our immune system to actually form any type of white blood cell and so that suppresses the the immune system and prevents it from actually mounting a defensive attack against that transplanted tissue or organ. Now, the major problem with this immunosuppression process is it's actually very dangerous. So as soon as we suppress our immune system, we decrease its ability to find any type of to fight any type of infection and that includes a simple infection from the common flu or the common cold. So because our immune system is suppressed, it not only is not capable of fighting that 
draft, but it also can't actually fight off any type of infection. And so people that are immunosuppressed can sometimes die from the common cold or the flu because their immune system is not capable of mounting any type of defense or response. On top of that, immunosuppressed people are also much more likely to actually develop cancer. And that's because cells like natural T cells and cytotoxic T cells are the cells that fight off the cancer developing cells and because our system is immunosuppressed, that means those cells cannot find those cancer cells and therefore the cancer cells that come from healthy cells can develop and that can progressively lead to some type of cancer. So although this method is actually helpful in fighting off these complications and solving these complications, this method is also very dangerous in itself because it depresses our immune system and that can basically lead to an infection or cancer that can ultimately kill that individual.